Good evening and welcome to the Summers County Board of Education regular board meeting. It is Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, and the time is 6.01 p.m. Item one is roll call. Let the minutes reflect that all five board members are present in the, at the meeting. Item two is invocation pledge of allegiance. Mr. Angel, would you do that for us, please? brings us to item three, approval of agenda and adjustments. The chair moves that the James and Law, Safe and Sound, Michaela Jeffries, and Chad Metter issues be pulled out and handled separately and individually from any other issues. I'll second. Motion on the floor, seconded by, seconded by Mr. Brogan. Board pull out James and Law, Safe and Sound, Michaela Jeffries, and Chad Metter to be considered as separate and individual issues. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining. Five votes in the affirmative. Those adjustments have been made. Do any members have any other adjustments or the chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda subject to the Make a motion we approve the agenda with the aforementioned changes. I'll second. Motion on the floor of Mr. Brogan, seconded by Vice President Farley. This board approved the agenda as presented to us by Superintendent Warble, subject to the motion for changes and adjustments. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Five votes in affirmative. This agenda for 921-2021 has been approved. That brings us to item four, public comment. It's a presentation, Lauren Crook, CSBO, on fiscal year 2021 financial statements.
too. So we had an excess of a, a little over a million dollars in just fund 11. So out of our county money, we had an excess of a little over a million dollars. Um, special revenue, that's gonna be your titles. Um, any of, out of that fund 61 is all of your titles. Uh, we had a little over four million and we had expenses of about 3.6. Those are the funds that we have to draw down at the end of each month, at least, or at least quarterly. And then our special revenue, um, Fund 71, which was our ESERP and ARP, we did have revenues of over 900,000, and we had expenditures of over 1.1 million. So those, that 262 um, that we had as a deficit of those revenues, we drew down in the month of July. So that's where that difference came there. And then Fund 51 was a wash because of our, that was our SBA project on the heating and cooling tariff. So at the end of everything, our fund balances are a little over 2.4 million, um, and that's fun from county level to federal level, but the one that we're most concerned with would be fund 11, which is our county, and that fund balance at the end of the year is approximately 1.9 million. So that's where we are, were as of June 30th, 2020. Um, from 20 to 21, mm -hmm. the um, <coughs> operating grants, mm -hmm. those are from state? They can be state or they can be federal. Is the fact that uh, 2021 is 9% less, is that reflective of uh, lower number of students? No, um, are you on the revenues or expenditures? Revenues. revenues. Um, actually, our fiscal year 21 with the operating, we actually used more of those revenues. So we tried to use, um, we tried to use more of those operating grants instead of our local level money. But this sheet is for the revenues by source that came in. So my question was, uh, if you look at fiscal year 2020, mm -hmm. there's operating grants, that's revenue coming in, correct? That is correct, yes. 69%. Well, that's our state aid. That base portion right there is I our understand. State. Yes. My question is, when you go to 2021, it's lower at 60%. Is that a function of lower number of students, or what is that a function of? That's a function of because we utilized our other grants and our other sources more than what we used our state aid. So in fiscal year 20, we didn't utilize our title grants. We didn't utilize some of those CTE grants. So that's why a more portion of our revenue in fiscal year 20 was 69% because we didn't utilize the other grants that were out there. So Ms. Crook, should he start, if you start at the yellow, those operating grants, is that what ate it up the next to help us out? Yes. Is that, can you see what that was saying there? Well, I, I just took it, it was, it was revenue by source income. that we got, it looks like income. Yes. So it shows income 69% 2020 mm -hmm. and 60% 2021. Right. That's so income. Yes, that's income. And whenever, um, whenever we're looking at our state sources um, on our revenues, that 9.8 is what we had with our state sources. And I don't have, this one is not with fiscal year 20, um, but for state this last year, we had 9.8, and the year before we had a little bit more. So we utilized more of our state sources. So that's why with those operating grants. Okay, I see then the 
small 1% of 21 and then the 9% there. So, yes. so that's the difference there. Yes. And still revenue coming in. Yes, it's all still revenue coming in. Okay, all right. Anything else? No, that's it. That, that's Unless a good question for clarification. It gets a little confusing. Yeah. But okay, well, but I missed that. That tiny little sliver of that dark food. That brings us to item five on the agenda, approval of minutes for September 10th, regular meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for September 10th. I'll second. Motion on the floor by Greg. Greg, second by Mr. Brogan, that we approve the minutes for the September 10th, 2021. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Five votes in affirmative. The 9-10-21 minutes were approved. That brings us down to item six, approval of bills. Um, let's take uh, James and Law first. We have a bill here from James and Law. I'll make a motion. We approve the bill to James and Law. I'll second. It's a motion on the floor by Mr. Brogan, second by Vice President Farley, that this board pay James and Law bill as presented to us by the superintendent and CSBO. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair abstains. Safe and sound bill presented to us. I make a motion we uh, pay safe and sound. Second. Motion on the floor by Vice President Farley, seconded by Mr. McBride, that this board approve the paying of safe and sound bill as presented to us. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Aye. Let the minutes reflect four votes in the affirmative that uh, Mr. Brogan abstained on paying safe and sound. Also, they should reflect that the chair abstained on voting for James and Law. The other two items are uh, personnel. We'll take care of those separately when we get to the personnel section. Okay, that brings us up to we have the remainder of the bills. I make a motion we pay the bills. I'll second. Motion on the floor by Vice President Farley, seconded by Mr. Angel, that this board approve the paying of the remainder of the bills. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Five votes in affirmative. The remainder of the bills were approved for payment. Item seven, approved transfers and supplements. Do we have any? No transfers and supplements. Item eight, on old business, we have policies update from Mr. Trey Moreau. We have read these previously. Uh, Mr. Moreau, sorry you couldn't be with us. Uh, there's quite a list of them. You're on, sir. Um, thank you. I'm sorry I'm out there myself either in person. I enjoy uh, being there and yet I uh, see you've got a new location. I'm excited to see that. Um, I uh, will be down uh, next week actually uh, in another work session. an 
update, how far along in this process are we? Okay, so until our next meeting, and these will all be on the agenda for the next meeting, is that correct, Superintendent Warhol? Correct. So these will be on the agenda, and I guess we'll talk with you at length at that time? Yes. Okay. I'll be back. Do you have anything else you want to share with us tonight, Mr. Moreau? Good. Appreciate your attendance tonight. Did you need me for anything further on the agenda? I'd be happy to take this in or, uh, you know, keep me in. Do you have any time you can appreciate him correcting the bill? Yes, sir. It's okay. Let me know. Uh, okay. I wanted to let you know Mr. Brogan appreciates the fact that you did your due diligence and you made that correction in the billing. Is that correct? Okay, Mr. Mr. Murray. <laughs> okay. All right. We appreciate your time. Have a good evening, and then we'll see you next week. Hey, Mr. Murray. Remember, remember, we gave you a Summers County hat. So if you're going to be at Shady, I'm going to watch to see if you have that hat on. Okay. Okay. Come up and visit me in the press box. We'll be broadcasting. I'll put you on the radio. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Okay, under item 8, old business, 8A, we have a list of, um, have a list of policies, it's Roman numeral 4-8-1, all the way down to Roman numeral 4-H18. Those will be taken up for detailed instruction or discussion at the next regular board meeting. Okay. No action. Uh, no action taken tonight, or just a discussion. That brings us to nine new businesses. We do have under 9B purchases over $20,000, Superintendent Warren. Yeah, uh, Mr. Boone has been working the last three and a half, four days on trying to get three buses in our fleet that need to be updated. Uh, we're gonna move forward before October because fuel prices from what we're hearing are gonna go up and all the prices for the buses are locked in at the prices right now until the end of the month. But when October comes, that could change significantly. Uh, one of the buses we want to buy is a 77 passenger bus. It'll be nice to get that updated with our fleet. Um, it just so happens we have a bus driver here that, there you go, it's, it's the worst kept secret. You're getting a bus if, if it gets approved tonight. But on a serious note, our school buses, the fleet that we have, uh, Mr. Boone and the bus drivers do a good job of keeping them going. Uh, the biggest problem we're having right now is also parts for buses. Uh, we've been scrapping uh, and scraping to find parts. It is not easy because there's specific parts that go to these buses and to be state code, you just can't, you can't put Band-Aid on it like you could 20 years ago and get by. Uh, they have to be up to code. So uh, Mr. Boone and the, all the bus drivers and the aides and the students that are on there, we've uh, done pretty well considering trying to keep updated with this. And also, this is much cheaper than going to lease it's not, a, leases are good, but in this case, it's better just to buy it now. Okay, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but 95% of this is refunded to us. Yes, sir. 95% of this total cost, we pay 5%. In view of the fact that the buses are about to take a price hike, then we are saving money on the 5% we have to pay by right. doing it early. And we're also, based upon your analysis, we're saving money by purchasing them rather than leasing them. Yes. Good. Uh, do any members have any questions? You said you weren't, we didn't have a, a day of when this would be delivered. Now, will we be paying our portion now or will we pay that portion of our delivery? Yeah, we have to pay up front.
but uh, they, they said earliest spring, latest a year from now, fall. So we'll get them in the fall, but I'd like to have them by summer because I'm speaking on behalf of bus drivers, this could get me in trouble, but if you get a new bus in the summer, the bus driver gets a chance to get to know the vehicle, if you will. So I got a nod over there, so I feel comfortable that was okay to say. Uh, the chair moves this board approve the purchases of these three school buses. Second. There's a motion on the floor by the chair, second over Mr. McBride, that this board approve the purchases of the three school buses. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Second. Five. You abstain? I wouldn't say. Okay, you want to abstain? Yeah, I guess that would be prudent. So we have four votes in the affirmative for this purchase. Please note on there that uh, Vice President Farley abstained on this vote. Okay, that brings us for, forward to item 9C under new business. Discussion, possible action regarding student support groups, fundraisers. Superintendent Ward should have a handout on there. It starts with Talk at Elementary, and uh, you have uh, the PTO, then you have an Office General, and then the Drama Club. Um, that's what they would uh, like to use this school year for that school system. You flip over to the next one, you got Hinton Area Elementary, again, PTO, Office, and then fifth grade. And uh, Jumping Branch, again, another elementary with a PTO, and that's all they have in, at Jumping Branch. And then you have Bobcat Nation for the high school, and uh, that is what is in front of you for fundraisers. When people hear student support groups, I, I, I put it in layman's terms, that's fundraisers. We have before us discussion possible action. Uh, the chair would uh, entertain the motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the fundraisers. I'll second. Motion on the floor by Mr. Brogan, seconded by Vice President Friday, that this board approve item 9C under new business uh, regarding student support groups from the county schools as outlined by the superintendent and presented to the board. Any discussion? Just curious, uh, what means the actual signature? Is there copies? Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. What I was looking to do for that up? is she was out um, with Lee whenever I had asked if they be due. Okay. So they have since sent one with her signature. Okay. Well, the only other thing I know is this. All the others had check marks where they didn't notify the county procedure, so I just want to make sure that that was okay. Thank you. Good question. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Five votes in the affirmative. The board has approved the student support group fundraiser as presented to us by the superintendent. Moving forward now to item 9D under new business. Discussion, possible action regarding extra pay for teachers. We are um, really hurting for subs, but the reason why I'm talking to specifically teachers tonight is we really are pretty slim with educators. A lot of our subs have become long-term subs in some of these teaching positions, therefore, it's hard for us to find um, a replacement. Plus, if any of our teachers get COVID or quarantine for it, um, that puts us deeper uh, behind the eight ball. And uh, in the past, we've tried to not use um, Title I teachers, and I had a long conversation with Title I teachers last year because we did use them an awful lot, but it's during a COVID pandemic. Uh, time and that's continuing this school year and we really are trying hard not to, to bring title teachers in. Our principals have covered numerous classes 
and have done a great job. One thing that I found out other counties have done, they are paying their teachers for their planning time to cover. So let's say here there's six or seven or eight classes in a day. Each teacher gets a planning period, but if you use each of us, there's six of us up here. If we have six teachers and we all give up our planning time, but we pay you for that, that might help cover for that time instead of scrambling around. So um, this is totally gonna be voluntary. We can't force anybody to use it. If they don't wanna use their planning time, that's, that's fine. Um, if they do want to be supportive and, and help out, then they sign up. And then um, what we do is we will pay them for their time in the classroom with a $30 flat rate. It does cost on average, when we do get a sub, it, it does cost about $137 for a sub to come in. So it's anywhere from $120 to $210, depending on the sub's background. So if you took a retired school teacher um, who has 30 or so, 30, 35 years experience and they come in, they're gonna get the top rate. If you get someone unexperienced, they're at the bottom. That's why I'm giving you the average of 137. Because I figured someone might ask that question to the left of me and I wanted to help you out with that one. Uh, we will save money obviously with $30 to a teacher to cover, but um, it's just another way to try to figure out how to get coverage. Uh, we're hurting for coverage, and I know our service personnel is the same thing. Everybody's hurting for subs right now, but this was just one way of trying to uh, support our kids and our teachers to help out with uh, the loss of so many positions right now. Um, as you look, the verbiage I, I did help you guys with, I thought we need to be very specific because this is a one-time deal. I don't want this to become um, like an entitlement. You know how some things get going and then you realize you can't afford it. Uh, we can't afford doing this all the time, but with eSurf money, we can use that and not county funds to cover this because this is for educational loss. We can, we can put it in that category. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer it. Um, question, uh, it's $30 per day that they give up their planning, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. And if they only give up that one time during a week, then it's 30 bucks. And otherwise, they may not be needed the other four days. So this is on an ad need basis. Right. But with our shortage of uh, subs and with uh, absenteeism, it's quite possible that they, would, they may give up their planning period several days right. if they agreed to it. Did anyone else have any other questions? How many periods, I guess I should say, would one teacher that needed the sub have in one day? Um, that's a question. How, ask how many periods? How many periods? There are, are there are seven periods. Seven periods. You know, no. that teacher and would, seven periods, they'd have a planning period, so there's actually six periods that they would need to sub for, so you could potentially cost 180 bucks. Yes. Would they also have, in addition to the planning period, the lunch period? Yeah, we they can't do lunch. lunch. So, right, but lunch what I'm saying is what, so a teacher would have how many instructional periods that they would actually need coverage for? Would it be six, or would they have a six. period and a lunch period? No, we, we would just cover the class of the six. If they had a, let's say for argument's sake, they had a, uh, a duty for lunch, well, we're just gonna have to, the principal's gonna cover it. You know, they're just gonna have to cover it. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, and that, that was, I was, I was going a different direction. Oh, I'm sorry, no, go ahead. Just, no, cause you, I, I didn't mean would we cover anything for them for lunch. I'm just trying to figure out how many instructional periods a, a teacher who was not, who was absent would need coverage. That's all I was trying oh, to Oh, the six period. Okay. Yeah. This, um, this shortage of substitutes, we knew this was coming. We've had a lot of substitutes of substitutes here for a very long time, they're retired teachers. And unfortunately, they reached a point they just don't want to do this anymore. And uh, that's a problem that's going forward. We're gonna find some way to s solve. But um, you have to have somebody with those students and it's just, 
it really hurts the delivery of the educational process if you have to use Title I teachers and if you have to take your administrators and do this. It just, uh, it, it just doesn't work. So based on that, if there are no other discussions, the chair moves that this board approve extra pay for teachers at the rate of $30 to cover classes during their planning using ESER funds during the 2021 school year due to substitute teacher shortage on an as-need basis. Motion on the floor of the chair, seconded by Mr. McBride, that this board approve the paying of teachers $30 to cover classes during their planning period using ESER funds during the 2021-2022 school year due to substitute teacher shortage on an as-need basis. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Five votes in affirmative. Superintendent Warwell, this motion has been passed. Let's hope that uh, teachers voluntarily uh, take advantage of this. It'll be a super help. And also, on behalf of the board, those teachers who do this, uh, extend to them the appreciation of the school board for the fact they're doing it. Because planning periods are important. I hate to, I hate to give up a planning period. But here we go. <coughs> Item nine, under new business, 9E. Discussion, possible action to approve gifting the middle school building to the city of Hinton, West Virginia. Um, I wanted to say right off the top for anybody listening, this, uh, this does not include Perry Memorial Gym, nor does it include the new central board office underneath the gym. So those are to be extracted and this is not part of the gifting process. It is a remainder of the building. Um, Superintendent Warbrock, I'm gonna let you update the board and then members can ask whatever questions they like and I will have some additional questions as well. Guys, there's not much to update other than we're in talks. And uh, just like you as a board, uh, our mayor has to work with his uh, board. And uh, it's a slow process, but as we move forward, I'll keep you up to date. But um, I think the, the city is seriously interested in obtaining the building. And uh, I don't wanna put anybody in a position. So let's just keep working together as a team to make sure this gets done right. Our attorney from Bowles Rice uh, has told me and advised me to make sure with the city that you're allowed to subdivide first. And I said, well, if the city takes it, I'm sure that can happen. He goes, I'm sure too. He said, but then you're also gonna wanna survey it and properly mark off what you're gifting. And I said, I don't think that'll be an issue either. He says, well, this sounds like a pretty good setup. He said the best place to gift it is to the city because then there would not be a reverter clause. If people aren't familiar with that, that means if we would, let's say for example, um, there's a, a nonprofit agency we could gift it to. The problem with that is it could revert back to us after five years. And there are horror stories with that where people have gifted and then the people that they gifted it to it made promises and it was a worse setup when they got it back than when they gifted it and they should have just kept it the whole time. So we want to keep that building, there's air running it still, air conditioning and heat, and we are keeping it clean and uh, we are making sure nobody messes with that property. It is our property, we want to take good care of it. But at this point in time, that is all I really have for, uh, we're in talks. Are there any comments or questions by any of the other members of the board? Not at this time. No members have any questions or points. Um, Superintendent Warble, I would ask that you make a note. Okay. And on, under old business, for each meeting in the future, under old business, that you include this line item on old business so that if uh, we come up the day before a meeting and we're contacted by the city, we can act upon that at that meeting. So if you'll include item 9E under new business to be under our old business for each upcoming meeting, 
until such time as we have uh, completed this transaction. Okay. okay. Yep. Any other discussion by any member? Uh, one question I have, uh, Superintendent Warhol, is there more than one party that has expressed possible interest in this building? Yes, there's a couple parties, but they're not from the Summers County area, but their interests are to get it so they can get federal dollars to update the building to make it a, um, I don't know exactly what they wanna do, but it has to do with um, making it um, like a retirement community because of where it's located near town activities, it meets a lot of requirements from the federal government for grant writing, which also includes the location, easy access to in and out of the facility and all of that stuff that they could get from the federal money. But uh, those would be called what they call tax credits. I've learned enough to be very dangerous about all this, but I'm not real intelligent on how to do any of that. I just know what I've been um, reading up on when I hear people say, I can get tax credits from the federal government. And uh, oh, the other thing that they can get a tax credit for is it is in a historic area and it's called a historic downtown. Therefore, that's a, another checkbox for federal dollars as well. So that's, that's what I know at this point in time. Okay, uh, regarding the middle school building, uh, so we know there's more than one party interested and uh, what we have on the item is gifting it to the city of Hinton. And uh, just from my perspective, certainly it's just one perspective on the board, uh, if the city of Hinton is in favor of this because they have jurisdiction here and they will oversee it. Uh, I would hope that the city of Hinton uh, city council approves that love to see that go to the city of Hinton. I just think that could be the best possible income outcome for this. Okay, that'll be on in the future. That brings us under new business item 9F, discussion, possible action regarding e-sports program at the Summers County Comprehensive High School and Superintendent Warren. I will try to speak intelligently on this, but I might have to give it up to my colleague, um, Mr. Angel, because we've had some parents ask questions, and I know Mr. Angel has talked with some, some of the kids, the parents, and also our principal, but if people don't know what eSports are, it's basically you're competing electronically with a game system. So we call them gamers today, and I think I'm up on that lingo, but anyway, uh, long story short, this is something that the our SSAC is looking at making a sport, and it also gets our kids involved in more activities. And uh, I think if we look into having more activities for our kids, and this meets Title IX, girls or boys can be in it, anybody. And uh, it, it's very, uh, it's inclusive. And uh, this would be a way for our kids to uh, enjoy some time competing against one another electronically. Uh, it does require, I would say, close to eight to ten thousand dollars ish to get it started, and then maybe after that we can uh, let the the high school, middle school uh, try to create their own funds. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'd like Mr. Angel to give a little more details because he hangs out with his son and those boys who hang out with his boys and those girls, and he might be able to speak more intelligently on it. But I will say um, our new tech guy has given me advice that you don't want to use just an old computer. You really need to get a gaming system. So I don't know if any of you have heard of a Nintendo Switch, but something like that. And to make sure we have enough speed so we can actually compete. I think we have around 30 some schools or teams that our kids can compete against. So if you think we're on the cutting edge, we're really we're really not. I couldn't believe how many how many teams were already out there. And uh, to me, if we can get our kids involved in more activities, that'd be great. Uh, just real quick, I know this has nothing to do with esports, but I talked to Chris Pack. He said after the pandemic's over, could we maybe start up wrestling? 
So I said, as long as it meets Title IX, he said, oh, girls can wrestle with the boys, no problem. I said, I'm in, but you're gonna have to come and talk to the board. I think it's good to get more programs like wrestling, esports, and other to come in and, and get our kids involved in something. We just have to be careful not to take away from one entity while we're trying to start a new entity. Um, and, that, and that's the biggest issue we have. But I'm gonna let Greg speak a little bit more intelligently on me, because I'm just rambling now. <laughs> you give me too much credit, token intelligently there. Uh, just a little history. So my son uh, went to my dad back early this year, and he told my dad, he said, I want an esports program. And so my dad started working with my son on this, and, and so that's why it kind of has a special place for me. Um, my, my son was concerned after uh, my dad passed that esports might not come to, to be, and I told him, I said, Nathan, I'll work with you. We'll see what we can do to make this happen. So with that, I started doing a lot of research. Uh, I, I talked to several of the the, the platforms that are used. There's a Play VS. It's like a sanctioning uh, body or someone who oversees the e a particular esports program. There's also, um, it's, I believe it's, I don't remember the acronym, but there's another one. There's a high school esports program. Uh, so there's several different ones that, that you can join. The one the state is predominantly using is Play VS. And so we had to, according to the gentleman I spoke with at the state, Play VS had to be used for two years before WVSSAC could pick it up as a sanctioned sport. Now, when I talked to him early in the spring, he told me that within the next year, they looked for this to become a sanctioned sport. That could all change due to COVID. So I did speak with a couple people here at the high school and we had two, two teachers who stepped up and said they would be willing to coach this program. So once that came into play, uh, I reached out to Mr. Hudgens. We have secured a location. We have coaches. We have uh, been in contact with Play VS. It would cost $1,350 for the year for Play VS to join uh, their, their platform. However, uh, the state of West Virginia is offering a grant right now. They'll pay 85%. We would be responsible for 15%. So it would cost us for a year's worth of uh, membership with Play VS $200. Um, I, I did uh, meet with the coaches, the two coaches. We discussed hardware and some of the things we talked about. There were two games they were, they were interested in participating in. There's about six different games that could be played. The two games they were interested in participating in, one is only played on the Nintendo Switch. So that gives our kids a competitive edge because no one can have, some of the games allow you to play on PlayStation 4s or a PC. And these two coaches filled me in on something because I'm not a gamer, I just watch my kids, but they did fill me in that if a player is playing on a PC versus a console, the PC generally is faster and there's less lag, so that, it, that person is gonna have an advantage when they're playing games. So the coach's concerns when I talked to them were let's start with a game where everyone plays on the same platform and we give our kids a competitive edge. Not, not necessarily an edge, but they're able to compete on a level playing field. Uh, so these coaches are very excited about this. Uh, I've, I've talked to them several times, and they are interested in getting this going. The deadline for the grant is tomorrow. Mr. Hudgens has already applied for the grant. So what will happen next, once we get equipment, then uh, we will get an invoice for our $200, and we can begin fall competition. There's a fall season. There's also a spring season. So that $200 allows us to play in both of those, those seasons. Um, we have had the opportunity earlier this year, but the program hasn't been set up yet. Concord College was offering a tournament. There were only 16 teams signed, that would be allowed to sign up to play with over $8,000 in scholarships available. 
Um, there are very large sums of money available in scholarships for esports. Do they have a program there now? They do have an esports program at Concord. I have been in contact with the person who's over that program. He said he would be happy to come down here and talk to us anytime. He would help us set our program up. And it's kind of a win-win for us and them. He can help us out with our program. We put a lot of kids through Concord so we can feed <coughs> gamers into his program as well. Um, it's, it just it gives our kids another outlet for social and emotional uh, interaction that COVID has kind of taken away from us. And, and it reaches a demographic of kids who may not typically participate in your average high school sports. And so that anytime we can reach someone who may not participate in other extracurricular activities, I think it's a win for us. So I have tried to uh, give Mr. Warble a list of some of the things the coaches think we need to get started. Uh, hopefully, um, hopefully we can get this off the ground and have our kids competitive within the next uh, season or two. So, thank you. New business item 9F, discussion, possible action regarding esports program at Summers County <coughs> Comprehensive High School. Do any other members have any points? Anybody else want to speak on behalf of this uh, consideration? We can use eSurf money for this because it fits the social emotional, getting kids connected, and we already have money allotted for what I call online connectivity. So, um, but like I said, if we start it, then we need them to continue. If they, if they want it bad enough, they're gonna have to work at it like a drama club would or a Spanish club, whatever club you can think of. But if it does become a sanctioned sport, then we'll have to have another discussion. Okay, um, you also mentioned something about an expansion considering a uh, wrestling program. Yeah, I just threw that out there that it's coming because okay. there, there's other options for our kids. All right. Chris is interested in coaching it and he's interested in making it happen. But I said, let's have you come to a board meeting and have a conversation. He wants the pandemic to be over with first because you really can't socially distance in wrestling. I've heard he's already went as far as even Matt's ready for it. I'm getting ready to storm, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you, um, yeah. I suppose when we get, when and if we ever get past this pandemic, you uh, bring him forth, bring him forward uh, and make a presentation to the board. And the board will certainly entertain that thought. Are we at a point where we need a motion for the East Board? We do. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we need to provide the funding to, to initially start the esports program. I'll second. There is a motion on the floor by Mr. Angel, seconded by Vice President Farley, that this board approve the funding and institution of an esports program at Summers County Comprehensive High School. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Very good. Um, in, no other discussion? All in favor that this board approve the motion that this board of fund with ESERF funds an esports program and set up the institution of such a program at Summers County Comprehensive High School. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. By five zero vote in the affirmative, we are now we now have esports at Summer County Comprehensive High School Complex. This brings us down to another item: nine new business nine G discussion possible action regarding ZMM and the bus garage wall and drainage. If there was ever an issue that has been well discussed in a community, it's this one.
Superintendent Warhol, I would like to request that on all agendas for future meetings, until such time as this is this project is completed, that under an old business you will include discussion, possible action regarding ZMN and the bus garage wall and drainage, so that if there will be any work order changes or anything that comes up, we don't have to um, come back after the, it won't be delayed, we don't have to come back after that fact with a special meeting. We would call a special meeting if something came up uh, before, because this project, the dirt needs to be moved, and this project needs to get underway, and this project needs to be completed, and that's, that's emphatic. So, having said that, I know everybody got an email. You got an email from Superintendent Warble uh, showing you a contract that was signed by Kimberly J. Rhodes, and there was an amendment to that contract. And this contract was between the Summers County Board of Education and CMN regarding roofing and repair of wall and drainage at the Summers County bus garage. Also, you may recall that at the time this was done, this contract was done and consideration was done, the bid that came in were more than we had funding for. At that time, we did a triage situation and we said we've got to stop the water from crumbing through the roof and ceiling tiles and whatever falling down on people's head. That was done. The rest of it uh, has languished and uh, so, I would like to uh, just generally ask the different board members, after having read through this contract, does everybody feel confident that we are in fact still obligated on this contract? Um, anybody want to make, please make a comment if you read and you feel like we're still obligated. Mr. Angel feels like we're still obligated under that contract. Mrs. Farley, I know you read in great detail. I, I'm of the same opinion. You're of the same opinion. I, Mr. I'm, McBride. I'm a lawyer, but I, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Brogan. Yes. Okay. Well then, getting to that point, I want to thank Superintendent Warble, and I want to commend him for his due diligence. You know, we've been working with uh, McKinley, having them look at this. But Superintendent Warhol, I don't know, um, in his talks with McKinley, maybe we should thank them too, he became concerned that possibly we still had an obligation because we only fulfilled or did half of that job. And so he researched it, and he's brought forth to you the data you have, which we're all in agreement. We are most likely still obligated to ZMN uh, to do this work. And so Superintendent Warwell, thanks for your due diligence there because uh, that the board could have gotten in a real sticky situation had you not, you and your staff not taken care of that. So again, we appreciate that. I do have one question and I don't know, uh, CSBO might be able to answer this. I'm looking at the contract amendment from July the 5th of 2019 and part of that contract amendment that the former superintendent signed with the, Mr. Ferguson, the vice president of ZMN, says fees will be invoiced at an hourly rate per the hourly rates attached in the contract amendment. There will be a fee limit of $7,500. Costs exceeding the limit must be approved by the owner in writing. Any fees associated with consultants will be directly invoiced to the owner. Um, yeah, as you all see, now they performed half the services, which was that $90,000 shingle roof on a 312 pitch roof. Did we pay seven? Do you, do you, would you by any chance know or have any way of telling us how much we actually paid them? And if it was on an hour per hourly rate, then I'm 
assuming then that they can uh, come back given today's rates because they're asking for a $4,000 limit not to exceed $4,000, but it would be done an hourly rate. So am I, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, and on that email with that attachment, you should be able to see the hourly rates on there with each description of, let's say it's an architect versus someone doing the manual labor versus, I don't know the specs of an electrician. There's different rates for different people. Just like we do with Bulls Rice, Trey is much less than Howard. Uh, so you do have different rates based on different uh, backgrounds and credentials and what the job they're going to do. So if we get to the 4,000, what happens then if there's more needed? They have to come back to us for approval or are they saying they'll do it for a total limit of 4,000, but if yeah. they use less hours, we'll be, we'll be charged less? The max is four. And if it's less, they're not going to bill us any more than what we should be billed for. The, the president is going to work with us on this because he understands the situation. And I think Zam M would like our business, and not only for this one, but future endeavors. Because let's be honest, with all this COVID money that's out there, all these firms, there's plenty of meat on the bone for them to go for more jobs. So they want to get this done because they feel the same way you all do that this was started and it wasn't finished. They would like to finish it too because their name's attached to it just as much as the Board of Education is. Ms. Crook, would it be fair to assume that they billed us at the hourly rate for services provided and we paid that and so anything we do on the rest of the project comes under this 4,000 limitation, okay? Um, any other members like to make comments or ask questions right now, uh, please feel free to do so. I want everybody involved in this. If in fact you have something that you'd like to say or question. And I'll pass the mic to you if you do. Well, um, it's pretty cut and dried. There is one question that I have and it's regarding and I don't have that in front of us tonight, and that's okay. We can take a quick look at that. Um, Superintendent Warble, before they advertise, put this RFP out before they advertise, would you ask them to send you an updated copy of what they are going, the specs they're gonna put out for bid? Okay. Send that to you. And then if uh, perhaps you and I can look at that and talk about that and see if... I would like to see the specs. Yes. And just, so... I do have a question now. Okay. <laughs> have they, so have they been back and looked at the building since they did the proposal in 19 ZMM? No, not at this point in time. But once we get this moved tonight, then I'll call Dave Ferguson tonight or tomorrow morning and let him know the board approved this, we're ready to move forward. He said since they've already done it before, they pretty much know what needs to be done. He already told me exactly what my colleague over here to my right, Jimmy, said. They gotta dig all the way down below the footer and start there and see if the wall is either deteriorating. If it's not, then they could put a membrane on there and then put proper drainage all the way around and get the grade the other way because um, there is an issue with that wall it's not an if, it's a when, because people have to understand that rock and brick and, and block are porous, and eventually it will deteriorate. And uh, it's not an if, it's a when, and we gotta get this taken care of. Mr. Boone has already gotten uh, everything ready to go to put the buses in a different location. I know this will be uh, an irritant, but it's already been an irritant long enough. It's time to cure it and, and put it to rest. So once I talked to Dave Ferguson, he said by next week we can bid it out and uh, the contractors can bid on it and hopefully we can start breaking ground October. That's the goal. Okay. Um, I think in the things that I've looked at, what put up a little red flag is he said they may have some updates to it. And so, Mr. Farley and I have been talking about this all the way back into 2019. 
and we have both been consistent in what we felt like need to be there, be done there. So, having said that, um, members, we can uh, we can approve this to go forward tonight, but God knows there's been enough time wasted on this. Uh, but I would like to do that with the caveat, Superintendent Warble, that you get have him send you exactly before it's advertised and he needs to do this he needs to do this immediately because he says he has it send that to you and then vice president farley and i would like to come in and look at those specs to see if we feel like there's something that they need to add to that uh, because of the fact they haven't been back here since then and uh and uh Mr. Farley, I think you agree we beat this like a dead horse, and I can tell you this is not rocket science. If you've ever built a garage, if you've ever done any construction, this is not rocket science. It has never been rocket science. And it has been uh, delayed to the point we've had, we've had people here who said that wall was not a concern, and more is a pity somebody would have said that. And no, no questions. Quit belaboring the point, but Dave Ferguson, the president, said he would have been here tonight, but he had a prior engagement with another school, so he would like to come and talk to you all if you guys have any questions at this point in time. So we can always have him come to the next board meeting if you would like him to, but I will get the specs and I will tell him tonight or tomorrow, get those to me so I can get it to you all, okay? I don't know it'll be necessary for us to see if he gets those specs to you. We want to just to get moving on it. Gotcha. Um, the chair moves that this board authorize Superintendent Warble to re-engage this contract for the purpose of repairing the bus garage wall drainage and any other attending issues related to that bus garage wall and safe for safety of our employees with the caveat that they immediately present us with their specs and that vice president farley and i have an opportunity to meet with you superintendent Warble, just to look, take a look at those specs that's a motion Could we second. okay everybody wants a second that one i don't blame you uh, <laughs> I think Ms. Farley seconded that. She's been engaged in this about as long as I have. So there's a motion on the floor of the chair, second by Vice President Farley, that this board approve, direct the superintendent to re-engage his contract with ZMN for the purpose of bus garage wall and drainage repair and any attending issues, subject to the caveat that uh, the specs are sent to us immediately and that Vice President Farley and I can come in and take a look at them. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. This motion is passed by a 5-0 vote in the affirmative. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Farley, would you please pass word along to those who have been waiting so patiently? so many years okay thank you that brings us down to personnel items I'd like to make a motion under West Virginia Code 6-9 and paragraph 2 we go into executive session there's a motion on the floor of Mr. Angel under 6-9 and 6-4 under personnel does this board go into executive session is there a second I'll second okay we have a second I think I heard Mr. Brogan has seconded is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. By 5 0 vote, the affirmative this board has moved to go into executive session up for personnel items under 6 9 a 4 state code. We will return uh, as soon as.
The chair calls this meeting back to order at 743, coming out of the executive session on personnel. Uh, we're going to consider personnel now, and we had two items, or two individuals who were pulled out to deal with separately. Um, Personnel that we're going to consider is um, that we pulled out is employment substitute service of Kayla Jeffries. The chair moves that this board approve this recommendation by the superintendent. Is there a second? I'll second. The motion of the chair to approve Michaela Jeffries as recommended by the superintendent. Seconded by Mr. McBride. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Abstain. We have four votes in the affirmative for McHale. We have Vice President Farley be noted as abstaining due to a conflict of interest. That is the only reason this was pulled out for separate consideration. Under the adjustments of the agenda, we also had another uh, item. Um, this would be employment professional, Chad Metter, Director of Attendance, Facilities, and Technology, Summers County Schools. This was pulled out. The chair moves that this board approve the superintendent's recommendation for Chad Metter as Director of Attendance, Facilities, and Technology, Summers County Schools. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by the chair, seconded by Vice President Farley, Chad Matter, Director of Attendance, Facilities, and Technology, Summers County Schools, as recommended by the superintendent. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. An abstention by uh, Mr. Brogan on this one. Again, that was the reason this was pulled out. There's no other consideration other than a possible conflict of interest. Okay, that brings us down to the remainder of personnel items as, re as recommended to this board by the superintendent. We have uh, resignation retirement. This has been duly posted according to Open Meetings Act. So everyone has seen this. We also have employment, service, talk it. We have employment, substitute, service. We have employment, extracurricular, for bus operators. And we have employment, mentor teachers. I make a motion we approve the superintendent's recommendations for employment under the categories of resignation retirement, employment professional, employment service, employment substitute service, employment extracurricular, and employment mentor teacher. Chair seconds that. Is there any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. Five votes in affirmative, Superintendent Ward, will your recommendations have been approved by this board? That brings us down to item 11, discussion of next agenda. And there's already been two items that I've requested superintendent place under old business on all future agendas until such time as those issues have been uh, concluded and settled. Does anyone else have any item that we'd like to place, have placed on the agenda for consideration to next meeting? Okay, having said that, uh, <coughs> superintendent's report, Mr. Warren will discuss facilities. I'll do a run down the list, and if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Uh, the first one uh, was the bus garage. We've already talked about that, and uh, I've already requested to Dave Ferguson, I need to see the RFP and specs. And so he's got that text and he agrees he'll get it to me. Uh, Hinton Area Annex, um, 
the old board office now for the Hinton area uh, annex. Um, the painting's done, so all the drywalling, caulking, and painting's done. Uh, they're doing flooring right now. On Monday, they want to put the ceiling tiles in. I, I'm hoping they'll be done by the end of the week. We'd like to get in by the first week of October, but definitely the second week for sure. But uh, at this point in time, we're almost ready to close the books on that facility. Uh, the sports complex or the metal building uh, on the football field, that's already started. Uh, we have a few more items we need to clean out of there, uh, but at least everything is off the walls four feet and nothing down in the metal. That'll help with them to start the process. They'd like to start bringing in the metal uh, to store it in the building so they can get ready to start putting that up, but they want to start on the, the bathroom area, and they've already started uh, cutting up the concrete. They'll get ready to jackhammer it because they got to see what's down in there and what was put in there at that point in time. I believe you all know about this one. About a decade old is the building, so they got to make sure everything's okay. Um, the high school, we are working here on the electronic doors. I'm tired of walking through the front door that says use other door. That's, we just gotta get it fixed. So Safe and Sound's working on that. We're also working on the doorways going towards the football field. It is a magnetized lock that won't open up. That is not good if we have to have a fire escape and the doors will not open. So Safe Sound is working on that right now. Um, it's, the good news about uh, remote learning right now is no kids are in here, so that's a little bit easier to work around that schedule. Um, also, at the end of October, on a Friday, when we have our teachers working here and no students, uh, I believe it's Trinity Tree Removal, they're going to get rid of some trees for us. As you come onto the property, the old tree, that's going to get cut down. Then they're going to, that big oak tree between the two buildings, the high school and the CTE, there's a big oak in there. That thing is huge, and the best way for them to get it out in one day is to use a crane. So they're going to use a crane to cut that out and move it out here. And then we got a few other old trees back here that need cut. And if you go towards the football stadium, you'll see some trees growing out and over lines. They're going to cut all that out as well. So that'll be taking place, is that the 21st, 22nd of October um, for tree removal. Jumping branch roof, we know that there's a small leak uh, on that roof, the, the pitch roof, the shingle part. Uh, Charlie's patched that a couple times. So far we're doing well with that, but uh, that, that's gonna have to take county money. But we gotta see how we do first with uh, the bus wall with county money and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get that taken care of. But at Jumpy Branch uh, next week, they're gonna pour the pad so we can put the, um, the uh, freezer units on top of that and that'll create more room in that cafeteria. So that is moving uh, pretty quickly. Uh, Talk it, you guys know basically the only thing we need to work on there is uh, getting that gym renovated, but that's down the road. Uh, that's why I don't really have any report on Talk it Elementary School. Um, other than that, I can answer any of your questions that you might have on facilities, but I'm glad we're hiring Chad, but he won't be here until the 18th, so I've been doing um, the facilities and running around making sure things get taken care of in a timely manner. Anything else? Anybody have any questions of Superintendent Warble regarding anything on uh, facilities? Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and everybody please make a note. Uh, it looks like our next meeting will be October, and October Thursday, October the 14th. The second will be October the 28th, 6 p.m. at this facility. Okay, everybody make that note. Uh, Vice President Farley, you're on. I make a motion we adjourn. The time is now 7.52. This meeting stands adjourned.